Hello and welcome to Having Coffee with Smock. I'm Smock and I just got hired as a staff software engineer at Google. Let's talk about that. The weather is beautiful and I decided to take a little chance and record outside today. I hope that the quality doesn't suffer too much. <laughs> Mainly I'm worried about audio because it's quite windy here. So essentially what I wanted to talk about is my career uh, change, uh, the way I moved to Google and how that happened and why. Um, so let's do talk a little bit about that. But why did I even uh, consider switching the jobs? As you know, I was busy with previous engagement with Cisco and I was quite happy there. There are periods in the year uh, of high activity for recruiters and uh, people who reach out to maybe offer you a job. Uh, and essentially this happened for myself lately. Um, my <laughs> LinkedIn inbox was, was breaking in seams. <laughs> I thought, well, why not give it a go and, and see what's out there just to know if I may be missing out. So there was quite a huge interest from a couple of parties. Uh, and that included quite well-known social media site, um, a car-related startup, or scale-up, I, sh I should say, uh, and also a couple of other financial institutions uh, were interested in having me join their ranks. Um, and I just thought that if I'm committing that time anyway, and uh, I'm preparing for all those interviews, uh, should I actually reach out to companies that I'm interested in? So this is what I did. I sent uh, my resume to Google, Microsoft and Apple. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that Apple immediately said, no, we won't even offer you a screening call. We are not interested at all. Uh, however, uh, a couple of other companies did. Uh, so that's what happened. And this is kind of interesting because my story with Google is a little bit of uh, like an affair relationship, if you could call it. Very soon after I joined Amazon, after moving to UK, uh, Google reached out to me and asked, would you be interested in, in interviewing for a role in Switzerland? And I thought, uh, bad timing. When I was looking to move away from Amazon and, and into Cisco, uh, at that point in time, I was also exploring Google as well. And I reached out to them and at the time, they weren't interested because they didn't have a hand count or whatnot. But eventually <laughs> they started hiring again uh, here in London. Uh, they wanted uh, people who were at my profile. So, you know, in order for a company like Google to pick up your profile, a couple of things need to happen. Uh, and I think that I was especially in luck because uh, I was just at the moment when I would release my book. By the way, thank you for asking. The book is going great. Uh, it's on top of a couple of categories. Uh, and yeah, I hope that it continues going, growing like that. If you're interested in acquiring a copy, there is a discount code and link in the description of this video. So be sure to check it out. Maybe this is something for you. Anyway, uh, having that book near completion and uh, almost released, I decided to put it on my CV as something that is almost done and on top of the, uh, what did you call it, experience section. And I guess that actually generated some positive attention. I actually applied to be a software developer at Google, but instead I got invited to an interview for a um, site reliability engineer role or SRE, which is kind of interesting. Like I shifted my career into some other, um, what do you call it? Speciality. I feel uh, very much uh, <laughs> not ready and prepared for this new role. But I will talk about that in a second. First, let me tell you about the interview uh, at Google for an SRE role, because it's a little bit different from what you might have seen out there. For me to get that offer, uh, it took seven different meetings. Can you believe that? Seven meetings to be actually offered a position in a Google. So what happened there? Well, it started off with a screening call from recruiter that wasn't actually a very technical person, but it was some sort of, uh, let's call it filter to just establish, did we actually get the right resume from the right person? Uh, that was followed up with a behavioral interview uh, with a manager that was supposed to assess your Googliness, how it's called. And that essentially comprises of different features of qualities of a person. Uh, can you actually solve problem? Can you think uh, in abstract way? Can you solve conflicts? Can you avoid conflicts? Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you get the gist of it. 
Then it was followed by three, three different coding interviews where you actually would code uh, in your preferred language, uh, solve different, well, algorithmic slash data structure problems. Um, interesting thing is that the code didn't need to compile. They wanted to understand how you think and they gauged if you can explain uh, your way of thinking and solve problems and then adapt on those solutions if need be. If they throw additional stuff at, stuff at you, can you work in an environment of changing requirements, essentially. Um, so no compilation, but just talking through the code and explaining what different bits did and so on and so forth. Um, so that, and after that, uh, what happened was a special type of interview that only happens, as far as I know, in Google for SRE. So it's called NALSD or Non-Abstract Large System Design. Uh, and in that interview, what you will do is you will um, actually design a some sort of a system, but you actually have to come up with all the calculations and tell how you can assess if the system will perform to uh, required standards. For example, you are given a specific time frame and you need to design a system around that time frame and actually talk through how you can be sure that the system will actually do what it's supposed to within the time frame. And then you're asked how many machines you will need to actually fulfill this requirement. Uh, how are you going to guarantee that the system is robust, stable, um, that it's constantly performing to a required uh, level and it, will it actually uh, be able to be maintained, uh, taken down for maintenance without disrupting the service and so on and so forth. So a lot of different questions where you actually have to come up with a math and say, okay, this is the time that it takes for a um, spinning disk to do a seek. This is how long time it takes for a uh, certain specific amount of data to go through from Los Angeles to, uh, let's say, Spain. And that's how I know that this specific thing will work most of the time at this specific level. And this is how I know that it will be able to handle these load peaks and so on and so forth. If you're thinking about applying for that role, there is a lot of resources out there. So just search for NALSD and you will find official references from Google. So, you know, this is not disclosing any, any specific uh, secrets that they uh, have you. They want you to be prepared. They want you to know what you should expect and they want you to know the answers to these questions. So after going through that very special interview, uh, what happened was uh, I had one more interview with my future manager and that wasn't so much of an interview to like assess me but kind of to assess uh, if I would be a right match for his specific team or should I maybe uh, well wait until something more appropriate comes along but at the time I already known that <laughs> I want to switch ASAP and I'm interested in Google and I want to start as soon as possible. My coffee is almost over, so let me quickly wrap this up. So after I went through all that, I actually got the offer, which was, let's call it a little bit of a surprise because I honestly thought that I didn't quite make the cut there. So, you know, it wouldn't be too uh, surprising uh, if <laughs> the response would be simply, no, we don't have an offer for you right now. I started the, on 7th of March. So it's about two weeks uh, so far. And let me tell you, it's a lot to take in right now. Essentially what happens is um, when you join these giant companies, uh, there is so much stuff to learn about. There is so many things to go through. And uh, Google is no different. When I joined Amazon, uh, they said that this initial days when you go through all of these trainings and you gather the required knowledge to start working what this is called is trying to drink from a fire hose and that is not uh, you know such a unique phrase because apparently google knows this phrase uh, equally well and they even label it like that so drinking from the fire hose is a difficult question difficult thing to do how are you going to acquire all this knowledge to become well, start producing value on your on your role. Uh, and there is no way around it. You just pick a little bits of it and you start collecting, start incorporating. The issue with Google is that 
a lot of the stuff is invent invented in-house. Google uh, has a very special set of needs and has a very special set of uh, ways to deal with those uh, needs. There are some similarities with how things work, but you know, even a simple thing as source control is a custom thing in Google. They have their own source control system uh, that works for Google and uh, famously they have a single shared repository among all of the developers in Google. That's why they need their own system, right? Because, you know, simply things like Git or otherwise, they are not handling this kind of scale. And that thing, this shared repository, is an interesting thing on its own, uh, I would say. Uh, because what happens is, because you're allowed so much access and you can view so many things, you can see how they are built, how they work and so on and so forth, there is a lot of compliance, you know, there's a lot of agreements that you have to read, understand and sign and agree to essentially. You essentially need to be responsible about it. Uh, and that includes problems like privacy of the users that use Google, uh, all sorts of things that you can do with devices that Google uh, is keeping the software on. So. A lot of the stuff that you do when you start is just going through all this legal slash compliance things that you need to be aware of and that you need to respect. Uh, and yeah, that kind of draws your attention away a little bit from the technical side of things. Uh, and there is plenty of that nonetheless. So I'm done with my coffee. Thanks so much for, for joining me today on this beautiful, beautiful sunny day in London. I hope you enjoyed and I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers!